So what's going on everybody? I'm doing another brisket cook. Um, this is just a regular whole packer brisket, cheapy packer. Um, this is a 11 and a half pounder. Uh, if we go by the rule of an hour and a half per pound to smoke your brisket, which people tend to say hour and a half per pound when you're smoking brisket, uh, that's, that's, that's a good rule to go by. A lot of times these will finish sooner or later, but one and a half hours per pound is pretty much in the range unless you're doing a hot and fast method where you smoke it at a way higher temperature. Uh, I have never done hot and fast, but maybe I will in a future video. But for this one, I'm going to be demonstrating a Packer brisket on the Master Built Gravity Series 560. Uh, I want to see how this turns out. I'm very anxious to see this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to prep this brisket and I'm actually going to do a genuine Texas style brisket this time. I did post a video a while back, called it a Texas style brisket, um, but it did have other things in the rub. And I'll explain why people are calling it Texas style is because a lot of the Texas style briskets, they use what's called a Dalmatian rub. And what a Dalmatian rub is, is basically just a coarse salt and some coarse pepper, black pepper. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a straight salt and pepper rub on this brisket and we're gonna smoke it on the master build and we'll see how this product turns out. So let's go ahead and prep this brisket and uh, see how it goes. Okay, here we have our packer and a lot of meat, a lot of fat here that I am gonna trim off. Um, you, do, um, you do gotta realize that when you're dealing with briskets, you are gonna lose um, a good bit of weight just in fat. There is some fat you wanna keep there's some fat that I like to cut off, like this part here. I like to kind of come in underneath this. This is a real hard fat. This will actually, um, if you chose to leave it on there, it would add a lot more moisture to your, your point end. But um, I've always had a real moist point anyways when I've cooked these things. So what I like to do is I like to take this piece of hard fat out. So I like to kind of go in there with my fillet knife. You can kind of feel the resistance and you just kind of Look down and as you're cutting, just look down in there and try not, if you start to see red meat, kind of back off a little bit, but what I like to do is I like to get in there and cut this guy out. And I do a little bit at a time. I don't like to go too deep and cut, start cutting into my actual beef itself. I like to get in there and just dig this piece out. So you can see it's just fat, man. Like who wants to eat that? Nobody. Now what you could do with this is you could save it, set it aside, and you could use it as like lard, cook it down, and use it as kind of like your own little bit of oil or grease. But I always just toss it. Sink's always a good place for it to clean out later once you're done doing all your prep. So I'm just kind of cutting down. This one has a pretty, pretty deep bit of it, but I like to get in there and just get that piece out as much of it as I can because I don't like eating big chunks of fat in my brisket. I've always been more of a flat fan. Uh, there are some people that just love the point, and I do sometimes. Point is really good for uh, chopped barbecue. We want to take the point and chop it into bits of barbecue. So you see I started to cut into the red a little bit there. It's what you want to try and avoid. But, yeah, the point makes a really good uh, chopped barbecue sandwiches. So you can always, you know, chop this part, chop the point, which is this side of the brisket, and then this is the flat. Now this is actually the tougher part of the brisket. This is a leaner, more, uh, this renders down quicker than this side. So a lot of times what people have problems with when they're doing briskets is they, end up drying this part out and this stays moist and then you end up with a real dry flat and a real moist point. So things to get by that is uh, you can wrap your brisket, you can mop it. Um, if you're cooking in a Kamado grill smoker like a green egg or something like that, you don't even really need to wrap them because they tend to hold, uh, hold moisture so well that briskets tend to come out fairly moist on a Kamado smoker. Look at that, man. Just all fat. And yeah, you'll have a little hole in your brisket from carving all that out, but that's okay. 
you want it. You want to get some of that rub down there to that meat anyways. So I'm going to come in. Like that. Just cut that out. I can go in a little bit more here. Yep. Just cut it out, man. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm gonna kind of come in and just get this a little bit. A real sharp fillet knife, or a boning knife as they call these, are great for this. So we're just gonna rapid camera this part and just, I'm gonna get this carved up and then we'll move to the next step. All right guys, so this is what it should look like overall. Now I know there are different opinions about, you know, digging in here and everything, but this is just fat. I just take it out. It's just too much fat. Another thing is I like to keep this cap about a quarter inch thick. And sometimes uh, when you're carving it, you can tend to go a little too deep. That's okay, not a big deal. Um, it'll still be fine, don't panic. Um, I gouged a little bit here, but that's okay. Uh, the rub will just get down in there more. But um, I usually also like to kind of cut off. I already cut it off, but on this side there was a piece. I just trimmed it off to kind of square it off. But yeah, um, it's ready to be rubbed down. I'm gonna change gloves. That way I can do the one hand on, one hand off method and uh, no cross contamination, right? So let's get the rub going. I've moved the brisket to this tray here. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm using canola oil as a binder. I've seen people use all kinds of stuff for binders. I have used mustard in the past. This time I've been using oil. As a matter of fact, I've been using oil a lot as a late, you know, as a binder. So there's that. So let's start with our black pepper. Just gonna kinda 
shake it out all over. You kind of want to go heavy. You want a thick rub on this. And you want a coarse pepper, which is what I'm using here. Flip the brisket over. Just pack that rub into the meat real good. And there we go, guys. We have our Dalmatian rub brisket. Coarse salt, coarse pepper. That's it. So let's go fire up the master built and get this thing on there, shall we? All right, guys. I don't do many nighttime videos, but I am putting this brisket on tonight, so I wanna go ahead and get this going. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the protector plates. I have this little, as if you saw my mods video, I had this little fan protector piece. I'm just gonna slide it in there. Open up the hatch here. Now what I've done down here is I've, uh, I've put in a couple of pieces of pecan just on top of this hash bucket grate here. And we'll see if uh, we get some smoke coming from these two as the hot ashes fall on them. That's what this whole grate is for is to catch like the extra big pieces of coal and allow them to continue to burn if they fall through. So we'll see how well that works. Let's go ahead and put my fire starter up in here. I'm actually shoving it in from underneath here and lighting it. All right, we'll let that get going for a minute. We'll go ahead and close the door. Two-handed job, obviously. All right, let's go ahead and power this thing on. And I'm gonna set the temperature to, whoops, 225, that's fine. Fan just kicked on. And uh, got a lot of smoke rolling out of the smoker already. That's a good sign. And we'll let this thing get up to 225 and then we'll put the brisket on. So we'll get back here uh, shortly. All right guys, I don't know how much this camera's doing justice on this shot, but um, we do have a steady stream of smoke coming out of the back of the grill and we do have the uh, grill up to 225. So what I'm gonna do is simply just close this damper down to about like so. Well, let's see. If I close it. 
still get some smoke coming out, but not like if I had it wide open. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set it about like there. Just enough for the smoke to kind of stay in there a little bit more. Let's uh, get the brisket on this thing. Okay guys, let's get the brisket on. Nice light rolling smoke there. Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put the point side this way and the flat this way. And I'm going fat cap up. That's an 11 and a half pound brisket. You can see how much space it takes up in this particular smoker. That's it, man. Let's close her up. Wipe my hands off here. That's it, man. See, we're about 221. It has a variable speed fan on it, so when it gets closer to temp, the fan ramps down. And when it needs to ramp up to catch up, it does. It's pretty neat, pretty intuitive. But uh, this thing's fantastic on the smoke, man. Okay, what I've noticed with this thing, because it's not a permanent mod, even when it closed, you do have some smoke leaking around the edges of it. If you sealed it in more, it wouldn't leak as much. But um, it still holds back a lot of the smoke. Uh, from just steadily pouring out too much. So, because check this out. Open it up. Look at that. Heavy flow of smoke. So, what this does is it does save on how fast you burn through your fuel, too, because of your airflow. You just dial her down just to it's for just open a snidge, and it does hold that smoke in there more. Uh, so, your smoke doesn't just rush out as quick. I do like that uh, aspect of this piece here. So yeah, we will uh, check on this brisket here in a couple of hours and see how she's going. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention in this is um, how do I have this set up inside the, the uh, coal hopper, wood hopper. I've got a little bit of coal at the bottom here. Then I put two or three chunks of pecan. And then I loaded more coal on top of that. And then I put a couple of chunks of pecan and then more coal. Um, and it's a pecan pieces and more coal and uh, this thing is topped out to the top and the type of lump charcoal I'm using is a mesquite lump and uh, so we're gonna have a little bit they're gonna have a lot of mesquite and pecan flavor in this brisket uh, which is fine because it's beef and so I'm all good for that so anyways you can see this thing is a smoking beast let me show you it's just going crazy Smoking like a champ. We'll see how long it takes um, before I have to top up the hopper. I'll check on the hopper here in a couple hours when I check on the brisket and uh, see how it's looking. I almost forgot, man. This grill did come with its own probe and there's a little grommet here that I can slide the probe through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'll slide the probe through. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it and we're just going to insert it here just in the point somewhere just like so just like that and I'll pull it in close the drill and we'll go ahead and uh, plug the probe in let's see uh, what it does Let's so plug the probe in here. Let's see if we hit probes. 70 degrees. So yeah, the probe, yeah, the probe function works fine. Um, and I, if you had multiple probes, you just toggle through them. So, uh, yep, we'll just let it keep on rolling. Okay, let's open up the... Uh, bottom here. I want to see if their theory about putting wood chunks down here is real. Like, legit. Looks like it, man. Looks like those wood chunks that I put down here are on uh, ashes of fell on them and they're smoking. You can see the smoke coming out of the chamber here. So, uh, yeah, that theory does hold true. You can throw your wood chunks down here, too, to get some other wood smokes if you want. I just added them to the column. 
and that worked fine for me. Uh, but I did want to test that, and looks like it holds true. All right, guys, we've been smoking for about two and a half hours so far on the brisket. I do have it connected to the uh, remote app here. So that's our uh, grill temp. It's been staying right around 225 this whole time. It's been pretty good, man. Not, not a whole lot of swings or anything. It's been great. That's my probe temp. We're about to hit that 160 saw here in a little while. We're going to sit at that for quite a bit. And then, uh, yeah. So overall, it's been going pretty good. It had a firmware update, actually, while I was doing this. But let's take a look at the brisket. Oh, man, look at that. Cooking right along. You can see it. Get all mesquite and pecan flavor going into that thing. Let's go ahead and close her up so we don't lose any smoke. The ash grate tool, uh, the ash grate piece that I added to the grill is doing what it's supposed to. Those little pieces of wood are burning down under here on top of the grate as well, which is fantastic. Get a nice smoke going. So, those coals fell down in there, and now I got a good bit of smoke going from that pecan. So, yeah, that uh, bottom ash bucket area um, serves as a great smoking spot, too, to put wood. But um, like I, I mean, we'll look at the hopper. The hopper's only, uh, we're only two and a half hours in. And you can see a lot of smoke coming up through the hopper, but it's still pretty full. So I'll probably have to top this off more towards the end of the cook. So anyways, that's our check-in. We'll check in uh, in the morning and see how this brisket's looking. All right, guys. The uh, temperature on the brisket is about 200 or so. So we're going to check the spots. Check a couple spots here uh, for probe tenderness. Oh, I like butter. Yeah, she's done. Get all that juice. Nice and moist, too. What I ended up doing was I, I did fill up the little water pan add on. And uh, just kept, I topped it up a couple of times. But this actually cooked in like nine hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill the grill. Okay. I'm gonna get this foiled up. Um, I'm gonna let it rest for a while because I'm not ready to eat this thing. I didn't think it was gonna be done this quick. Uh, it cooked really quick in this grill. And uh, we'll do some slicing and see how she turned out. Okay guys, got the brisket here all triple foiled and I had it wrapped in a towel on in the oven. Uh, not the oven wasn't on, but oven's a pretty insulated place to put it. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap this thing and uh, see how this turned out. Uh, a couple things about this grill I will say. Uh, about six hours in, uh, the coal had gotten kind of low because I used lump coal and lump coal takes up a lot of space so it kind of burned down. There's a lot of pockets of air pockets of stuff around the coal so like space filler wise uh you're you'll find that your lump coal is going to fill up that column way more uh with less versus using just little briquettes so i like using lump coal i feel it burns slower and uh i just like the way the flavor comes off of lump coal that being said the grill did shut off on me when the coal got low uh, I checked my phone because I did kind of catnap through the day or through the night and um, Noticed that it had disconnected so I went outside and there was no power source. I had to turn the grill back on I don't know how long it was off but Still this this cooked really quick and I think it's because it was in a smaller space versus a big offset So we'll see how this turned out man. I'm really curious how the smoke green looks if there is one and Because um, there was a lot of smoke so let's get in on this Okay, let's unwrap the brisket here.
Like I said, I did triple foil wrap this thing. And a lot of juices in there. Look at all that juice. <laughs> Like I said, this was a uh, 11 and a half pound brisket, and uh, I don't know quite how much melted off of it, but, oh yeah. She looks pretty good. So, our flat ends about here. So we're gonna separate this point from the flat. So I'm just gonna come in and cut. And we'll just kinda do the whole presentation thing, right? Oh, look at that, guys. Wow. And this is the flat side. So let's go ahead. You see we got a little bit of a smoke ring on there. I would like to see more pronounced smoke ring. Um, but that's not too bad. This smells absolutely incredible. But, man, look at that. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and cut figure out which way the grains are running here. These we're gonna cut from this side. Yep. It's just two quarter inch cuts. Hey, thank you baby. You can just carve her up. You can see. Yeah, I got some nice smoke ring in here. We'll go ahead and carve the rest of this up. And this brisket actually looks really good, guys. I mean, look. It's nice and moist. I thought it was gonna be dry, to be quite honest with you, but it's, all, it's moist. It's real moist. Very happy with it. I mean, you can see, just very moist brisket. Don't know how many of you like the word moist, but that's the best way to describe it, so. Looks like we're getting kind of into the part where the uh, grain kind of changes to go the other direction, which is why I usually separate the point and uh, flat. So anyways, let's bring the camera up on me and we'll check this out. All right guys, let's see. Man, it's fantastic, it just pulls apart. Let me try a bite. Mmm. Mmm. This is fantastic. Super tender. It's not too tender because you I hate when brisket's too tender. I mean it just falls apart in your mouth. It's good. Mmm. Mm. Good pecan flavor in there. Definitely taste that mesquite. That was a mesquite lump I used. Man. Salt and pepper rub. That's fantastic. It's been a while since I've done one like that. But that's a Texas style rub called a Dalmatian rub. Definitely do it. What it does is um, it kind of takes a focus off of the flavor of all the other ingredients that you put in these rubs. And it brings out more of the beef flavor, I've noticed. Um, so in other rubs, you've seen me use chili pepper and um, paprika, for paprika mainly for color, and then garlic and salt pepper. And uh, I believe I've used some other things, but I've never used sugar on beef. Don't ever use sugar on beef. It just doesn't do, I don't think sugar works very well on beef. It does very well on pork though. But, the salt and pepper Texas style brisket is what you're gonna taste in a lot of the Texas restaurants, you know, local dives. But yeah, the salt and pepper 
That's all you really need, man. If you if you just want to do, you just want to do like a Texas style brisket, just salt and pepper it. I got some criticism in my old Texas style video. But, but man, this is great. This is probably one of my better briskets I've done, to be honest with you. And this is just a cheap packer. This isn't Wagyu, this isn't Prime. This is just your cheap packer. And when I say cheap, right now, right now, this time, it's like 250 a pound. Briskets are not cheap right now. Beef is not cheap right now. But anyways, guys, this grill did fantastic. Well-balanced smoke flavor, not overpowering. Not that uh, that funk flavor you get if you use too much powerful smoke. This worked out great. And uh, other than it shutting off on me in middle night because of the whole fuel issue. And another thing, this is kind of off topic. Well, it's not off topic, but it doesn't have anything to do with the brisket. But when I started this cook and I got the grill fired up, there was a firmware update. And I noticed after I did the firmware update, when you open the main chamber, cooking chamber, the fan doesn't shut off now. It only shuts off for the hopper side and the uh, ash door, the hopper door and the ash door. But the main cooking chamber, the fan just goes. And I don't really like that. I, I, I think I'm gonna reach out to Master Built and talk to him about it because I don't want that fire ramping up when I have the door open. I would rather it just ramp up after I close it, so because this grill is designed to ramp up really quick anyways. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to do a demo of this uh, cook. And actually, I'll show you guys here. You can see on the point, I had a pretty decent uh, smoke ring going on there. Um, this is probably one of the better smoke rings I've gotten out of my grills. And I've seen people get some pretty incredible ones. I did put the brisket on at room temp. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Maybe if I did a, a colder brisket, threw it on, it would make a difference. That's all I got, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you're notified. Um, if you're on Rumble, uh, give me a Rumble. And also, give me a like and subscribe on there as well. So, cheers, guys. I'm going to clean myself up, and uh, I'm going to get the rest of this brisket carved up and put away for lunch later. Cheers.